We're live. I'm wide awake. Hey, Chuck. Yeah, I got her. All right. Hey, class. It's another great day in Hideaway. Yes, it is. All right. Our first little thought of the day. You know Don Miller? See here, where's Don? Hi, Don. Don Miller tried to ask me a trick question this week. You don't know that? He said, what rhymes with orange? I thought about it a minute and I said, no it doesn't. <laughs> That's, that one went around this way, came back around, hit a couple people in the head. And you know, speaking of Don Miller, he wants to talk to us a second about some, a very important event that's coming up in the future, but it's, it's exciting news as usual. He's, he's Mr. Exciting. That's what we call him at the golf course. Mr. Exciting. What rhymes with orange? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> okay, I just want to make an announcement about Cowboy Evening uh, so you can mark your calendar for October the 7th. That's a Thursday night. Omer and Sue have very graciously offered their hill. It will be outside. In the case of inclement weather, it will be here at the church. And we have booked Dave Tanner again this year. He was here in 2015. For those of you that were around, gave a very, very good uh, performance that night. He has one very special one for us this year. So please mark your calendars. October 7th, Cowboy Evening. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you for all that work you do. Uh, all right, we got that. Uh, also, next week, okay, that's October 7th. That's in the future, but it's very, that's going to be great. We need to have a big crowd there, and we will. Uh, next Sunday, you know what that is? John, what's next Sunday? East. E, E, <laughs> East. Easter, that's right. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Next Sunday's Easter Sunday, obviously. Uh, schedule's going to change, people. So I will, I will try to notify you every day this week on Facebook. And Karen will send out emails for those that are on the email list about Sunday school being at 8.30. 8.30 Sunday school next Sunday. So it'd be like a sunrise service, a little bit. <laughs> sunrise Sunday school. Uh, and at 10 a.m. we will have a combined service at Frontier Park, 10 a.m. next week. Frontier Park combined service. Mark that down on your calendars. All right, Sunday school's 8.30 though. Another announcement, people. The golf tournament. We have it scheduled for April 18th. Look at that. See, I'd, I'm going to be a politician. April 8th. If you haven't ever noticed, they do this. They do this. April 18th, there's the golf tournament. It's the Lakeside Class Golf Tournament. Men, women, everybody's invited. Young golfers, older golfers, as far as experience, that is. Older, old people can't play. We're old. Right, Tom? So, but everybody's invited to play golf. We have a nine hole. We have an 18 hole. So you can do what you like. Uh, we start at 1 o'clock that Sunday, April 18th. Uh, we, once again, we're not going to have an after, after tourney party because of COVID. Uh, but uh, we still get together. There's a sign-up sheet going around as Karen passed out. She filled it out for us. At the end of the sheet, it says, meal, question mark. I've talked to... Uh, Bob Percival, and he said he will get us a roast beef sandwich, chips, and a drink, tax tip included for $11. If you want to do that, just check that, and then we'll, he'll have you a sandwich ready after the tournament uh, for those that are playing, and uh, it'll go to your member number. I'll get, I'll get him a number plus your member numbers beforehand, and we can all have a little sandwich together and fellowship and talk about how good we were at golf. Right, Fred? 
Yeah, yeah. All right, so a lot of stuff. Guess what Tuesday is? Who wants to guess? Not you, David Simmons. Pantry, that's right. Fifth Tuesday, we volunteer at the David Powell Food Pantry. Lakeside Class does. Every time there's a fifth Tuesday. Starts about 8.15, 8, 8.15. If you've talked to David already, that's a reminder. If you haven't talked to David, raise your hand, David. Where'd you go? Back there. He's back there. If you want to come and do be the personal shopper for people coming in for food, we have a good time doing it. I crack the whip when I'm there because we go a little slow sometimes. We got to get those people through so we can get to Whataburger. It's very important. So this Tuesday, be there. If you haven't signed up, talk to David. Uh, he's already talked to some of y'all. Uh, birthdays. Well, you know, Donna Geimer's birthday is tomorrow. And she's celebrating by moving away. They sold her house, if y'all didn't know that. Sold her house, and they're moving down to Cyprus, Cyprus, Cyprus Texas, where the, he's got a job, right? Okay. Teaches down there. Okay, good. Uh, and then Ronnie McManus's birthday. Where's Ronnie? Mm-hmm. Skipping out on his birthday week. The 31st is Ronnie McManus's birthday. And if you could call him and give him a super hard time, I would appreciate that. Ronnie McManus, he lives on Lone Star, so you can, we can TP his house. You want to? We can roll, it, roll his trees and stuff with toilet paper. Remember? Remember that? I know that. The 27th, which is my favorite number, by the way. Mike and Nancy Vander. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Another one. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. We're in trouble. And Suez Canal is blocked by a ship, if y'all didn't see that. A big ship. So, Mike and Nancy Vandergeesen's anniversary was yesterday. And you know, Mike, you know, when Mike married Nancy, he knew that she was Mrs. Wright. <laughs> Little did he know that her real first name was Always. What a crowd. That's awesome. Good to have an audience again. Uh, we got some visitors today. I, I, won't, I won't embarrass you very much, but Carol Holt is here. She was ordered by Evelyn to come to church today. She was ordered, so Carolyn, Carol obeyed. Evelyn, Evelyn, okay. Carol Holt, she lives right next door, is that right? Right next door to Evelyn? No. Street over, oh, okay. Street over. Oh, okay, welcome. And then we have Terry Baker, she's here. She lives, uh, sh did we get her paperwork? Okay. She lives somewhere in Texas, I'm guessing. Huh? Morningside. Very good. That's, is that close to the pickleball courts? Yeah. You watch us play pickleball? We, we play pickleball over there. It's awesome. Welcome. And then Sam Severe. He was, he was here a second ago, then he said, oh, you're doing... Announcements? I'm out. <laughs> He's not here. Okay. Uh, any other announcements that I've forgotten? No? Lots of things to do here at Lakeside, obviously. So, just a quick question to y'all. How did the hamburger introduce his girlfriend? Meet Patty. Meet Patty. <laughs> and to thankfully and joyfully give us a lesson today, meet Angie. I am on. Okay. I asked Robert to give me a stool just in case I needed to sit down. And then I thought, okay. I, I never did really um, explain, and therefore, that won't come up at all. Okay. 
<laughs> Instead of struggling with that, I'll just go back here. Um, whenever I had hip surgery this last year, okay, you gonna fix that for me? No. Oh, you just came up the chair. That's well, that's much better. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, I had hip surgery last November, and by way of public service announcement, now when it's much after that. I didn't want to tell anybody then because my life was getting pretty ridiculous. I was having surgery a lot. I talked to my uncle the other day and he said, so Angie, are you still working for the school district? And I said, no, I'm trying to make a career out of surgery now. <laughs> um, he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, I just, I, about every 18 months I have surgery and now it's John's turn in two weeks he's, he's having surgery on his neck and I, he said he is and, and I said yeah and, and he said you know it seems like East Texas doesn't agree with y'all maybe y'all ought to move back to Dallas and I said well it's kind of seeming like that's the truth um, but John's going to have neck surgery in two weeks and so he'll be wearing a, one of those lovely little collars 24 7. Yes I, and I said you know what I said if I had to do that I would be so whiny <laughs> Um, and, and he did not say a word <laughs> because he knows it's true. <laughs> I would just be unbearable. No, I was going to say something about that, uh, about that uh, Suez Canal thing and that big sh uh, ship. I don't know if you've seen a picture of that, but it's a huge a ship that's got a lot of stuff on it and uh, supposedly there are hundreds of ships behind it and a little tiny backhoe that's going to try to get, move all that dirt. A little tiny backhoe, great big ship. So they've called in, of course, our Navy to, to try and help them move those things and they'll, it, they'll get it done. But if you were waiting on a refrigerator, I got bad news for you. <laughs> And we started, um, and this was not very bright, but we didn't know. We, we, we have done a lot of not bright things, uh, really, in our married life. Uh, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> a lot in the last year and a half. <laughs> and uh, in 2020, when things just kind of slowed down to a stop, we thought, well, since things have slowed down to a stop, you know, uh, in 2021, when it got started there, we thought, okay, well, it, since things just aren't going to seem to be picking up here, let's paint the kitchen. Well, we painted the kitchen, and about the time we took the plastic down, you know, that we had up to guard the paint from the rest of the house, li listen, I'm telling you, 12 hours later, fever broke, and we had COVID. And, uh, and then John, of course, was in the hospital. And, uh, and of course, that was just, that, that was awful. I don't, I, I don't remember a lot of it. It was just pretty bad. And he was supposed to go for his surgery appointment at that time, and I was supposed to start my uh, rehab on my hip. Now, I, I, I was going to start this story with explaining my hip surgery. I didn't tell everybody about my hip surgery because, like I said, it was getting kind of ridiculous, all of my surgeries I was having, and I didn't want to talk about one more. And so I did not have hip replacement because if I had, I'd do some cartwheels for you. I tore my medius. Now, if it had been my maximus, it would have really been a problem. I tore my medius in my hip, and we really don't have any idea how I did that and uh, the doctor said it would be a year before my hip would be uh, back to normal and I thought he didn't really mean that but he really did and um, and so that's why I'm walking funny that's why I look like an old decrepit woman and um, and so uh, I didn't get to do my rehab when it started and so now things are even worse and so I don't know if I'll I, I'm always gonna walk funny so I, I may try to make the best of it and get me a lot of really cute canes I have no idea but anyway so uh, so everything just seems to we, we started a so then when we, we when when that snow vid came along or snow apocalypse or just snow whatever you were calling it uh, at that time well, we got this bright idea that we'd start trying to do the, the bathroom because we knew we were going to do that at some point this year. 
and um, well, that was not a good idea either. And um, and so we, but you know, we weren't planning on having any company because nobody's been coming to see us anyway. And so um, we've been going slow, really, really, really slow. And all of a sudden, this week we found out we got two weeks to get it finished. And so now we're going really, really, really fast. And uh, and so we're just, it's not going well. But anyway, we found out that we were going to, our tub was not going to get here till July. But now we feel like our tub is probably on the 200th <laughs> ship <laughs> out there in the Suez Canal. So it may be three years before we see our tub. So we're just glad we have a shower. Okay. That's that's true. 2020, 2020 was, um, you know, this time last year, we were doing something totally different, weren't we? We, we right now, some of us are seeing each other's faces. Some of us are seeing each other through masks still. But last year, for the first time in my life, and I'm sure yours too, we were being told we couldn't come to church. And that was the strangest feeling ever, ever. I was sitting, we were sitting on our patio watching church on our, on our phone. And that was the most bizarre feeling of my life. I felt more unfree than I had ever felt, and it wasn't necessarily because um, there was a war going on. There wasn't a war, but it was a disease. It was a black cloud. It was fear. It was fear. And we were all sitting in our house and we were all afraid of a germ that could kill us and did some. And we didn't get to celebrate lives that were well lived. We didn't get to um, comfort one another like we needed to be comforted not just because of the death or the loss of loved ones, but comfort because we were afraid, because we were alone, because we needed one another. It took a little while, but we learned new ways. We're very creative. We learned Zoom and FaceTime and new things, new ways. And I would venture to say at this moment, you know, John and I, uh, we discovered um, some uh, min new ministers or some ministers that we had known about before, but now we get to watch them also in addition to, uh, uh, to being here and present for uh, services here. We like Robert Morris. Who, uh, who is the minister at Gateway Church in South Lake in, in, uh, uh, in, in the Dallas area. And we, so we watch him maybe a couple of times a week. We really like him. And so we enjoy that. And I, and I think Satan may have thought there for just a few minutes in 2020, he may have been rubbing his hands together and he may have been thinking, <laughs> I've won. I've won. I locked up the church doors. They can't go. They can't go. And they're going to get lazy. They're going to get lazy. They're sitting around in their pajamas drinking coffee. They're going to get lazy and they're going to quit going. They're going to quit going. I know how to make them break the habit. They're going to sit in their houses for one year. I can keep this going. I can keep this going. Because all those people up there in the white buildings in that place called Washington, I'll get them all talking about it. We'll put it all on the news and we'll just perpetuate the whole thing and we'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. And they tried, didn't they? And look where we are. 
We're right back where we belong. But not only that, it's still going. It's still going. On TV, there's more stuff. There's more stuff on your phone. There's more stuff on the TV. It's getting translated all over the world. You know what happened? There's more available. The word is going out there more than ever before. He should be more scared than ever before. It's more exciting. That quiet. That quiet. Where you could hear a pin drop for just a few minutes in 2020 that preceded a, a sound of the gospel that's just I think it's reverberated around the whole world and I just think it's so exciting I just think it's so exciting because now I think in corners of the world that maybe the gospel had never ever touched People are hearing and seeing the excitement of others about Jesus Christ that had never seen it before, that had never heard it before, that had never seen the excitement that we feel and that we take for granted. They're seeing it. They're feeling it. He didn't win. He didn't win, and he's not ever going to win. We know the end of the story. He's not ever going to win. It was just a pause. Somebody just pressed the pause button for just a second. But you know what? I mistakenly thought that when 2020 was over, 2021 was going to be different. I don't know if y'all have seen. There's some little meme, um, and I wish I could quote it exactly right. I never can get those... I, I'm, I, I can't do, I would never be able to do um, Twitter because I need a lot of words. And to, when you tweet, you can only have a few. <laughs> and I have to have a whole bunch. And memes are like that too. You know, you, memes, you have to have just a few words. Well, I have to have paragraphs. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do memes. But there's one about 2020 said something like, um, you know, 20, 2021 said to 2020, Hold my beer or something, you know, because it was it was going to be really bad. What? How, how did it go? It was good. Anyway, that's how 2021 has been for us so far. It's just like I, we're really behind the eight ball on the whole thing. I mean, it just keeps on. There's something, and then there's you know we think, okay, well, <laughs> thank goodness that's over, and then there's something else, and there's a one-two punch, and then okay, you get up, and then there's a one-two punch, and then you get up and then there's a one-two punch and I'm thinking okay well maybe there'll be a little hope for 2022 and this is still March it is still March right yes this is March and here's the thing sometimes in my life I, I, I try to always live in the presence of God I have known spiritual giants in my life all my life I have been blessed with some really strong examples in my life with some people that I've just had so much respect for that have just been really really godly people uh, some men but a lot of really really strong women in my life my my aunt I had two really wonderful wonderful grandmothers and then my life has just been sprinkled with, with women that I've gone to church with, Bible class teachers and, and women that have taught me many, many wonderful things. And, and I just feel so blessed to have known so many wonderful people uh, that have, have taught me and helped grow me in the faith. And one of the first women that ever helped me so much grow me in the faith was someone that I met when I was 20 years old. And she used to tell me when I would get discouraged by someone and just feel like giving up, you know, because when you're 20 and somebody says something hurtful to you, you're just ready like, well, oh, I quit, you know. And so she was like, Angie, when somebody is standing between you and God, that means they're standing closer than you are. 
well, I was 20, and I'm old. that was a long time ago. And I've never forgotten that. And so I always try to think, well, now that's a growing experience. I've at least got to get a little bit further than that person so that um, they're not standing between me and God. I got to get past, I got to get past that, you know. And there's been so many things like that that I have learned from people that have helped me grow. I took a course once. Um, when I was very young, I was, I was probably 25, and it was taught by just, she just glowed. She just, the first time I ever met her, um, I remember she had on a pink suit. She was a little gray-headed lady. I think she was 85, and she, it was called Christian Woman Development Course. And she charged $100 for the course. It was a six-week course. You had to read two books every week. When you're a young mama with two little boys that have lots of energy, reading two whole books a week was a lot. And so was the $100 because I stayed home with those two little boys. I didn't work. And, uh, but I took that course. I scraped that money together and I read those two books because if I was going to pay that $100, I was going to get my money's worth out of that course. And, uh, and we, had a, we also had another workbook that we had to do things out of. And, we had, and it was a great... Oh, and it had many useful things in it. It wasn't just Christian principles. It was principles about uh, how to behave as a, as a, as a woman and how to, uh, to bend down and pick things up. You know, you just bend over. You know, you knelt down and pick things up and how to get in and out of a car. You know, you put your bum in first and you switch your legs in and, and you don't, uh, you know, how you don't get in the back seat of a car and leave your bum outside the car, you know. <laughs> And so, uh, and, and, and the way she taught it, of course, was, was so cute. But one of the things that she taught us was, don't even think about it. But even now, you know, you, you think when you get to be a certain age, you think, I'm going to be doing these. It, you know, when, you, when you're like in your 20s or your 30s, you're thinking, boy, I can't wait till I'm 60. This stuff is going to come automatic, man. I'm going to be knocking it out just like this. There's always a challenge, isn't there? At, there's always, you never get to this place in life where you've conquered sin. There's a new sin. There's a new challenge. There's a new something that the devil can throw at you. He's got a new tool. He's got, a, he's got this box that's got something new in it to throw at you, to tempt you with forever. He's got something new all the time. I don't get that. I really don't. I thought we'd get there. <laughs> I just, I thought we'd get there and we'd arrive and we'd just all be happy and be nice to each other and go to heaven. That'd be it. But that's just not how it works. We have to keep learning. We have to keep growing forever. And I'm, I'm going through some stuff right now in my life where I'm growing and I don't like it. <laughs> I, I really, really, really don't like it. And I, I think I've told you before in this class, you know, I, I, had, I, I really wanted when I walked up here to say, and I, and I, and I forgot, I was going to say, I was going to say, good morning, Lakeside, because this is the first time I've ever taught Lakeside class in this room. I've taught, the, I've taught class in this room before. I've taught ladies class in this room for 10 years. I, I used to come and speak in this room when, we, when I first moved here. But um, this is the first time I've taught Lakeside class in this room with you guys in here. And so, so this was uh, pretty exciting to do this. But when I, um, right now, as, as with some things that, some challenges that I am going through, I think I've spoken to you, bef to actually to this class and told you before that in my life, even at this age, I can be, I have times when I'm very impulsive. But especially, no, no, not from the peanut gallery, buddy. I can just run off and, and I'll think, hey, that's a good idea. And I'll run off and grab God's hand and I'll say, come on, this is going to be great, God. And then after I'm doing it, I'll think, I didn't pray about this. I didn't do anything. I just thought it was blessed and it was a good thing. And I didn't. I, and and so here I am in the middle of it. And this was not such a good idea. Well, I, and so now what do I do, God? 
And so he has to fix it for me. And, and he always does. Uh, I make a mess and he cleans it up. Um, but I, I always kick myself. I think, I, I did not pray about that first. Why did I not do that? And then sometimes I put on my I can't pants. I'm really, I, those are my best fitting pants. I do have some, uh, uh, some knockoffs. They're called my I can't pants. <laughs> I wear those most often. I got those in East Texas. My, I, I, but my I can't pants, they have the apostrophe on them. And I say, I use those a lot. And recently I, I've, I've used them a lot. And I, I have my, my aunt who is one of my mentors that I, I, I just call her when I, mostly when I am really been wearing them hard and I haven't washed them in a long time. And I'm like, I can't do it. They want me to do this and this and this. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And she just says, when I'm in one, when I'm, when I'm in my I can't pants, she says, well, and that's about all I get from her. <laughs> Cause she knows that those are my determined pants. And she says, well, 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 and so we just talk for a little while and she just listens to me. And so I've been wearing those pants now for, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks. It's been a while. I took them off and washed them. <laughs> no, these aren't them. And I finally called her last week and I said, I know what's wrong. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, I just said I can't and I didn't pray about it. And she said, yeah. And I said, so I'm going to ask God, and I'm just going to do whatever I have to do. I just, I'm going to quit telling him I can't. And I'm going to say, whatever you give me to do, I'm just going to assume I can do it. And I don't like that. <laughs> because... I, uh, I had rather do what I want to do. You know, when, when uh, uh, Lewis was talking about that this morning and he was talking about um, having that intimate relationship with, with the Lord, and I crave that, and I always have. I, I grab hold of certain things in the Bible, the, the thinking on things that are pure and lovely and noble and right, and I and I'll and I I'll grab onto a verse like that and, and that and I will just hold that in my mind and I will think on those words and I will just recite those words over and over and I'll think about that word pure and I'll think what do I know that's pure and I'll think about babies and how pure little babies are. I don't know anything more pure than little babies. They are just you just look at those little smiles. And there's nothing more pure than that. There isn't anything more pure than that. That that is pure and holy. That that just came straight from God. And that is so pure and holy. And lovely, is there anything more lovely than spring? And we're watching it right now. Just all of a sudden, I just looked around and I'm just seeing red azaleas everywhere. And I'm like, well, that happened overnight. Good grief. It's beautiful. It's just so lovely. And then you look at somebody that's helping somebody for absolutely no reason. They don't have any connection with that person. They don't know that person. Never met them before. And they're doing something good for them because it's right. It's because it's right. They don't know them. They're just doing it because it's right. And then I, I was in children's ministry for a long, long time, and I used to sing the little song with them about the fruits of the Spirit. If you want to be a fruit, fruit of the Spirit, you can't be a kumquat. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what a kumquat is. <laughs> but those kids just used to love that word, kumquat. <laughs> and so we would sing uh, about the fruits of the Spirit, but love and joy and peace and patience. 
I, I know we all joke about that word patience, but oh my goodness. When I used to drive from Mesquite all the way down through the canyon, and oh my goodness, it's so much worse now, y'all. Don't go. <laughs> It's worse, it's worse, stay here, <laughs> don't go. John and I tried to go see our grandkids last weekend um, in uh, Alito, and we sat in traffic for five hours, it was horrible. And, um, but uh, I would drive from Mesquite all the way over to the other side of Irving every day. And just most, a lot of days, I would just sit in traffic, just sit there. And one day it occurred to me, you know, there's somebody up there who's probably had an accident. And if I had left a few minutes earlier, it might have been me. So I'm just going to sit here and pray. I'm going to listen to music and do whatever. And I'm just going to be patient and happy that it wasn't me. Or it could be that somebody in the front of the line spit outside their windshield and somebody thought it was rain and the first one slammed on their brakes and that's why we're sitting here, we're sitting here for two hours. <laughs> Sometimes I did think that. But, <laughs> but, but you just, you, patience is a beautiful word and it's something that we can all be more of with each other. And I've been meaning to apologize to you because I should have called you and told you I had no slides. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, like I said, a good behind the eight ball. I wanted uh, to. Uh, I wanted us to think for just a moment. Um, I haven't used any of my scriptures yet, and, we, and I do have some. Um, in those times when you have on your your I can't pants, and I know you all own a pair. When you think I can't do this, I can't. Because we all face difficult situations. There's not, some, there's not a person in here who hasn't gone through something hard. It's different for everybody. Sometimes somebody goes through one hard thing that lasts for years. For years. And you think, how do they do that? How do they live with that for years? I don't understand how they do that. And then one, another person has situations that they go through one thing after another, after another, after another, after another, and you don't even really know. Their life looks like it's just perfectly normal. They're out working in the yard and going on a trip and doing this and doing that, and it looks like they're fine. But actually, they got one thing after another after another, after another. Everybody's got a situation in their life. But you know what really I love to think about? I, I, I read or listen to, and right now mostly I listen to, the Bible through every year. And I started that when I was 50. And I made a commitment to myself and to the Lord that I was gonna do that every year for the rest of my life. <clears throat> wow, <clears throat> I'd like somebody to release me from that commitment. I think it can only be God because this year it got really hard for some reason. I don't know why. It, for This year it got really, really hard. And it was during that snow apocalypse, whatever you're, we're, snow again, whatever you're calling it, because I skipped those days because John was home and, and we I just was not reading it and everything. And so when I caught up, I had like, 10 days I was listening to. So you're listening to numbers. Numbers <laughs> for 10 days of blood and guts and names that nobody should ever name their children. And ten thousands and four thousands and ten thousands and four thousands and you think and I'm like, oh God, I know I said I would do this. And I know that if you put it in there, it must be something. I mean, I honestly, I really believe that these are all words God wants us to know from Genesis to Revelation. And I really, really, really believe it. And I, and I read it and I listen to it and I think every morning I think, 
give me a word, God. I, I, I need a word. I want to hear what you want to say to me today. Let me, let me hear what you want me. But after I've been listening to that, I'm thinking, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I can do the New Testament, but I can't do this, Lord. I just can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't do it, Lord. I just can't listen to it anymore. And all of a sudden, I heard that voice say, Finn, February 29th. I said, okay, I think I can do it, Lord. I believe I can make it. <laughs> because I finally got there. But I want to tell you something. When you do it, he throws in little nuggets to save you when you if you can hang on through it. The Lord said to Moses, "Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites, say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you." The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. There's no prettier blessing than that. And it's thrown in there. It's thrown in there for you. So that you can make it through numbers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'll make it. But I, may, I may not live that much longer, so I might make it. <laughs> But I want to know what God's got in there for me. And so I'm going to keep trying to make it. Sometimes I start with the New Testament and go back to the Old Testament because I don't like always reading Revelation at Christmas. <laughs> Revelation and I always don't see eye to eye. But Revelation does have something that I find fascinating. And it's that there's an angel for every church. Now, I've heard ministers and different people say, yes, but that doesn't mean every church has an angel. That's just a, that means something else. And I'm thinking, well, now, I like thinking that every church has an angel. I like that thought. We don't know that that's not true. Every church may have an angel. I like the story in 2 Kings 6 and 8 where the servant was afraid and they were going to go into battle and he was scared. And this was with the story with Elisha, and they were about to go into battle. And so Elisha prayed, and he said, he said, let him see, Lord, so that he won't be afraid. And so they opened their eyes, and when they opened their eyes, the hills were filled with angels and chariots. And so then that servant wasn't afraid anymore. That's why I like the stories of Elisha and Elijah. There's always chariots. I'm going to go chariot races when I get into heaven. I think it's going to be really fun. I believe that if we could see the angels that are fighting on our behalf, we would just be so courageous and we would put our I can't pants up. We've just got to pray and believe that God is always with us and he's always fighting on our behalf and he's always, always going to be there for us. We just have to draw near to him. You know, one of the things that always uh, kind of frightened me a little bit, 1 Peter 5. Let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> oh no, I'm all the way back there in Daniel. That's not where it is. Um, well, I have a sticky and I can't find it. It's First Peter. Somebody's removed it from my Bible. There is no first first Peter. <laughs> I won't have to read that one anymore. Okay, here it is. Okay. First Peter five eight. Okay, I'm going to kind of read the end of uh, five here. It's to the elders and the young men, this, uh, this section of uh, 1 Peter is. And so it's talking to elders and the young men. And I like when they are telling the elders, the, the older men, how to teach the younger men. It says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And, and I've known so many older men 
who in humility teach the younger men. And, and I find so much uh, grace in that. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that you may lift up in due time and cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the face, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. That's what we know through all of this. The whole world, that's the encouragement that I found through all of this. It's not just us, the whole world. Our brothers through the whole world are undergoing the same thing. In 2 Chronicles 16, 9, I just want to close with that thought. 2 Chronicles, and I know I can find it because it's in all those. 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. He's looking for us when our hearts are fully committed to him. So I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you, Angie. Mm -hmm. Good word. Good word. Karen reminded me that I forgot to tell y'all some more good news. Thank you for that good news, Angie. But more good news that y'all probably know something about. First of all, the uh, Night to Remember, Judy, $1,100 was made that night. And we sent it to Bre we're sending it to Breckenridge Village this, this week. And now that all the money's in and the checks and stuff like that are accounted for. So $1,100 we made with over something we planned in two weeks. So it worked really well there. And then the witness crosses, uh, I thought, oh, man, witness, I don't know about the witness cross stuff. I don't think that's going to work. $2,930 to local missions. So Phyllis Fortenberry spearheaded that again. She's good at those ideas that I think I, that's not going to work. And she makes them explode. So she's amazing. Speaking of amazing, here's Pat Hanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was a good lesson, followed by the pastor's good lesson. I told him he went to quit preaching and went to meddling is what I told him. <laughs> and that means it's hitting home. He said, well, I was preaching to me too. So anyway, uh, we have several today. Uh, first of all, Linda's son had one eye operated on and it's doing well. It's relieving the pressure. He has blood behind the eye, or in the eye and so uh, he's going to have to have the other one done at a later date. No, Linda Turbin's daughter, I mean son. Yes, yes, Linda Turbin should clarify that. And Pam Kale, you know, she likes things that match all the time. And so then she does, she wants a new knee to go with the other knee. <laughs> so come Tuesday, she's going to have a new knee on the right one. So it will match the left one. So we're going to remember you and your husband as well. Because <laughs> he's been down that road before, but we're going to pray for you all and the doctors that do the surgery. And Tony Wolfskill and Anita, we need to remember them. They're going to Fort Worth on Tuesday because he's got to have all the preliminary blood work and everything. On uh, Wednesday, he's going to have the valve replaced. So remember them as they travel and then while they're there as well. And you may not know, and you may know, Ben Hughes is having some problems, and he's going to have a cardiac cath on Friday. And that's in preparation, if everything goes well, that he will have a valve replaced at some later date. The date has not been established for anything yet. Uh, they're not sure. If, it, if he has to have anything done prior to that, then it will be delayed. So remember Ben and Sue. And Sue, of course, is, and I've been there when it's like, can I borrow your walker? No. Well, why do you need it? So they have walker problems sometimes too. So bless their hearts. Remember them. And we have two 
Phyllis Barker is having lots of issues. You know, she fell and broke her pelvis. She's like a china doll, just the least little thing and she breaks. But now she's having a more difficult diff problem, if you can, if her blood pressure. She called me very, very early this morning after I talked to her yesterday, and I know she, <laughs> she talks to Suzanne and other people quite often, but she wants prayer because her blood pressure was sky high and she doesn't know why, but I know part of the reason is she's had pain. The pain is not as bad as it was, but also decisions that have to be made. She's gonna to have to go to rehab, and then after that, she's not real sure what the situation is. So remember Phyllis and her family as well. And also, uh, you've probably been seeing where Melba's daughter is not doing well at all. In fact, I've talked to Melba every day this week, and day before yesterday, she was doing better. She's in COVID, has had COVID in the hospital for a week with pneumonia in both lungs, but all lobes. And last night they had to put her on a ventilator, or yesterday late. So they were hoping not to have to do that. And a couple of days ago, she was doing well on her own and not having to have any substitute oxygen. So. Anyway, remember her and Melba Boyd as well, because uh, that's a difficult situation there. And <clears throat> talked to Richard Bean briefly yesterday, and bless his heart, he was trying to talk to her and help her. And so there, he said, you know, I broke three bones. And he said, this is getting old. And I said, you know, he's such a tease. And I said, well, we're just going to have to wrap you in bubble wrap. And he said, that would be a good idea. He needs to be wrapped in bubble wrap. So remember them and bubble them around with prayers. They need prayers, both of them and Patsy too. And then, the, of course, the death, sweet Carl Copeland. That one really shook me. I don't know about the rest of you all, but when I read it, as healthy as he looked and all, I was just floored. But anyway, he did pass away. And his service will be Monday, April the 5th, 2 p.m. in Sunnyvale, First Baptist Church. And that's on Beltline Road in Dallas area. And then Eleanor Acton. Some of you know and some of you didn't know. But, of course, Eleanor was here for years and had many ac had accidents and all and just came back bouncing and and she's been in the Dallas area for about a couple of years now, but she did pass away this week. So remember her family during this time. Are there others? Seems like every time we... Yes, Sylvia. Oh my goodness, oh, bless your heart. You know, there's something, people hurting all the time, but we're thankful that we are here and people are coming out and feeling more comfortable being around being around each other and all. And we're, John, we're gonna remember you and Angie as she takes care of you. But if you need instructions, talk to Judy. She's had about three months of practice with the brace. So she can help you with all of that. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, in prayer, please. Father, help us to steal our hearts and quiet our minds, Father, as we look to you for guidance. You're here with us at all times. You're with these people that we spoke about today, those that are unspoken as well. Be with the doctors and the nurses that care for them day in and day out. For friends who, and family who rally around those that are ill, those who have lost loved ones, Father. Be with our nation, Father, right now. Help us, our leadership, and the, the right thing will be done that you would have in honor. Be with our missionaries on the far and field, Father, and those here at home, including us, Father. Go with us this week. Bless everything that we do. May it honor you, and we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see some of you.